Wow, I am literally crash landing into this video to tell you about how amazing it is to travel with only carry-on luggage. It might sound crazy, but after traveling to every country with only a setup just like this, I can confirm that it is really surprising how little material possessions you actually need to have an amazing trip. And it is also so liberating to only have this amount of stuff because you don't need to check your luggage so you're never worried about getting lost with the airlines and it's so easy to transport it from place to place and move everything from each hotel that you're staying in. The reasons and benefits for only having a carry-on are quite long. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what I have in these bags that I can make it for at least a month of traveling continuously. There may be a few laundry stops along the way and of course the stuff that you're packing can vary uh, by the destination's weather that you're going to be experiencing. But worst case scenario, you might need a thicker jacket than this or a few extra layers. But other than that, you can definitely make it around the world with just a carry-on. First up, we're gonna be diving into my backpack. So I have this big guy here. It is quite heavy. And the reason why I chose this backpack in particular, it has a lot of pockets on the front, which is great for dividing everything I need, as well as, and most importantly, this pocket on the back, which enables me to be able to slide it through the uh, handle of my carry-on and I never have to carry my backpack on my back. It just goes directly onto my carry-on, which has been a lifesaver for my back. Trust me, your body will thank you later if your backpack has one of these straps. Getting straight into it, in the back, I also prefer to have a backpack that has a slot for my laptop keeps that very safe for the entire trip. And I also usually bring at least one hat with me on each trip, preferably one that doesn't have an issue with getting crumpled up. Then in the big middle part of my backpack, I actually have a smaller backpack, which looks really funny, but this is my day pack. I found that traveling around, you know, doing day trips around cities or hiking can be kind of a bit overkill to have a backpack this large. So I carry a smaller backpack as well. And inside of it, it doubles as my camera case, which I also uh, have a microphone on, which I'm currently using at the moment. So I've got my camera set up here. I have a 16 to 35 millimeter that I travel with and I recently got a uh, 50 millimeter as well. So those are my two main lenses and I also travel with a GoPro. Uh, Vlogger's uh, classic gorilla pod tripod, which is great for, for filmmaking. And also, if you are not a content creator, photographer, videographer, and you don't have to have all of this stuff taking up the room in your suitcase, I envy you because so much of everything I carry is camera gear related, which you will see again right here. This is my gear bag. I have all of my messy chargers, hard drives, cases, extra batteries. All of this kind of stuff is in my tech bag, which also goes in my backpack. So that's what's going on in the main pocket of my backpack. Then on the outside, I have a convenient one for my passport. I also can carry some cash with me here as well. There's actually a more hidden part of this pocket, so I'm not just, you know, a pickpocketer's uh, paradise <laughs> right here. I also have a uh, extra battery pack for if my phone uh, dies unexpectedly while I'm traveling. And then 
headphones. I actually travel with not only these noise canceling AirPods, I've had noise canceling over the ear headphones, but for how uh, much space they take up, I decided to ax them from my uh, carry on travel list because it's just really impractical to carry a big case of headphones. We have a lot of extra masks everywhere of all different varieties. This is a new fun COVID related travel, travel pack. And then I have pens for a lot of the different uh, immigration forms, anything else that comes up like that. Uh, a notebook, some kind of journal to be able to write down my thoughts. I use um, a notebook for to-do lists when I'm working and since I work a lot while I'm traveling as well. So it's always good to have some way to, to write. Uh, sometimes I also bring a book to read if I'm not gonna be working you know, the entire trip, but books are also very uh, um, space filling, so I don't necessarily recommend bringing them. Uh, if I were you, I would invest in some audiobooks instead. Then on the sides, I have my hairbrush. I usually keep this separate from my amenities kit because I get tangly hair in the wind all day and it's easy to access from my backpack. Then I also have extra converters and sunscreen in all of my bags. Over here we have my two pairs of sunglasses. Having two pairs of sunglasses is important to me because for one, as you can see, I carry it in a case. These are nicer sunglasses that I have you know, spent a bit of money on, so I want to make sure that they don't get scratched. And then I think it's also important to have a pair of sunglasses that you don't really care about. So if you want to do something more adventurous, like going on a motorcycle ride or going kayaking or swimming or anything like that, you can wear your less nice sunglasses and use them in case uh, it might be something where you could lose them or break them, etc. So having two pairs is really helpful. That's about it for the backpack. So let's move on to the main event in the carry-on. And now it's time to get into the good stuff. Oh. I'm so sorry. Welcome to my crib. Uh, it actually does feel like home, these suitcases, because I've ended up living in them for basically years at a time. So it's time to give you a little uh, apartment tour, if you will. <laughs> One of the things you might notice right away is that there are no packing cubes. I haven't been converted into a packing cube person yet. I haven't exactly seen what the difference would be unless you are just kind of a naturally disorganized person. <laughs> but especially in a carry-on, it's really easy for me to keep track of where everything is because there's not very much of it. So if you have a good argument for or against packing cubes, let's get this heated debate going down in the comments. As you may have noticed, what I'm wearing right now is actually a typical outfit that I would wear to the airport. Unpopular opinion here as well, I try not to wear athletic clothes uh, as much as possible if I'm not A, going to the gym or B, doing something active. So even at the airport, I like to wear things that are, you know, a bit more real clothing-esque, I guess, and I am a huge fan of cargo pants because of these amazing pockets on the side that actually fit a real grown human being's phone. So I highly recommend cargo pants for everyone. And I also travel with at least one big jacket that is outside of my suitcase or uh, my backpack. I like to have my biggest, most bulky pieces of clothing, like my shoes, uh, to be what I'm wearing when I'm going to the airport. I like to bring some kind of neutral colored sweatshirt. You'll notice that all of my clothes are very neutral and they all tend to work together. So every outfit is completely interchangeable with each pair of pants, uh, leggings, tank tops, long sleeve shirts, jackets, etc. For It's pretty simple for me. I've got this pair of pants. I've got 
my favorite pair of gigantic cargo pants that I love because I can fit an infinite number of things in these pockets. I've got two pairs of leggings for hiking, exercise, sleeping, uh, sleeping on planes. If it's gonna be a long overnight flight, I will wear leggings to the airport. But other than that, I like to stick to real pants. And then I also have two pairs of shorts. And importantly, I have this kind of belt where it has holes all throughout it and it's completely interchangeable to any type of pant. Uh, if you're wearing high-waisted pants and you need a belt or if you're wearing low-waisted pants uh, or a dress, etc., having a belt like this works for everything. So I only usually bring one, maybe two belts. This is a bit of a specialty item. I've actually started to travel with this steamer more recently as I've become an Instagram person who takes a lot of photos in various outfits so if I would like my clothing to not be wrinkled for my photos I will use this steamer the back just pops off and you can fill this full of water and it will uh, unwrinkle your clothing right here I have a secondary gear bag that has extras of everything. I am talking from very painful learning lessons here. I cannot stress enough, especially if you have laptops, phones, uh, any type of camera equipment, filming, creating content, anything, please carry an extra laptop charger, an extra camera charger, extra batteries, extra hard drives, extra iPhone cables, all of that, even an extra phone, if you can, uh, in a separate bag. So if my backpack gets stolen or I forget something when I'm out during the day, I have an extra to fall back on that is safely in my suitcase back at the hotel. Please do this. If you listen to anything in this video, that's one of the most important things. Then, one of the reasons why I don't use a packing cube is because there's a little built-in one in most modern suitcases. And in this kind of stuff, as a woman, travel with like one normal bra, two sports bras, uh, underwear, and for a month worth of travel, I'll probably bring five to seven pairs of socks. And I'll also bring uh, one basic bikini as well. And all of those little things, they just fit perfectly in this little middle side pouch. On the other side of this divider, I have my toiletries bag, which I will dive into as well. Uh, I bring a scarf or a sarong with me most places that I travel because it's a great item for layering for uh, women if you need to go into some type of religious establishment, a church, a mosque, anything like that. It's easy to do this, uh, to do you know one of the, the over the head kind of covers uh, or if your shorts are a little too short and you're getting a lot of extra attention, I'll maybe wrap it around my hips as well. So this is actually another item that always goes in my day bag because you never know when you're gonna need it. If I'm feeling fancy, I'll bring an item or two of clothing like this dress which has a little fancy belt that goes goes with it for nights that I maybe want to dress up a bit more. But for the most part, I am a very functional and practical uh, dresser. So you're not going to find too many uh, long flowy dresses for places like Mykonos or Cappadocia. For the most part, I have all of these different tones of clothing that all match together. but. I've got a few statement pieces. This is one of my favorites with a big map of the world. So having one or two articles of clothing that are fun and um, you might be excited to take photos in is always a good idea. Then I bring usually one long sleeve shirt, but again, this depends on the weather in the destination that I'm going to. If it's gonna be cold, maybe bring two or three, but for the most part, you're gonna be wearing a lot of the same clothes a lot and there are so many opportunities to do laundry everywhere in the world. And then counting the shirt that I'm wearing, I have 
three tank tops. This is great for sleeping, for traveling, etc. Sometimes I'll also bring a t-shirt or two, but I typically like to go between long sleeves and tank tops. For footwear, I have some of my, shown you my shoes like three times now. I have my uh, casual everyday walking around shoes. I can walk for miles in these ones. I will bring a pair of shoes to work out in potentially, depending on the trip of course. Uh, this could be better used as hiking shoes if you don't uh, run or exercise while you're traveling. You may or may not need to bring athletic shoes, but there is a hybrid that I'm excited to tell you guys about, which is these Tevas. I've also seen really nice pairs of Chacos are a game changer. I have climbed mountains in these, I have walked hundreds of miles in these shoes, and they are not clean or um, very sexy, but these are some of the best things I've ever found for my travels because they're so versatile. I could go on a run on a treadmill in these shoes and I would be fine. I've definitely done that before. Sometimes I'm gonna be wearing, you know, a dress like this. I'll bring a little bit of a cuter sandal that's still very comfortable to walk long distances in. <sighs> I cannot stress this enough. Don't pack uncomfortable shoes. Please don't pack them. It's a waste of space. You're gonna torture yourself if you do wear them and you're gonna be mad at yourself for bringing them if you don't wear them. So it's basically a lose-lose situation. Now that you've seen everything inside of my suitcase, we can break down a bit of what I have inside my toiletries bag because this definitely takes up a lot of space, but it's some of the most essential things that you're gonna need during your travels. Dang it! That's the shot! All right, it is the moment you've all been waiting for. Last but not least, my toiletries bag. So we've got a lot of very important stuff in here, but it's a lot of stuff. So we're gonna run through this pretty quickly. First of all, very strong men's deodorant. Sunscreen for the full body, then sunscreen for your face. I don't wear anything less than 50 SPF on my face. Seriously, take that one under consideration. It's very important for anti-wrinkles, anti-aging, freckles, all of that. Then I've got a small bit of body lotion, especially to use after shaving. And then I have a razor, my toothbrush. I travel with some small sized conditioners. Got the shampoo as well. Then bug spray, always essential because you never know you're gonna need it until it's too late. Any medications you need. I usually travel with a few extra uh, Ziploc bags because some airports tend to ask for you to put all of your liquids in a plastic bag. I have a couple of spare uh, 3.4 ounce containers for miscellaneous face washes, uh, conditioners, anything like that. I keep my makeup pretty uh, small. I've got only a few essential items in here as well. Now I have my go-to leave-in conditioner for my hair. This is definitely one of the best products that I've ever found. It's from a brand called uh, Marrakech and I can't recommend it enough. It's been a lifesaver for me. Then we have, uh, I get a lot of headaches when I'm traveling, so I travel with both liquid IV, which I can drink in uh, bottled water, and then also a good amount of Advil, Tylenol, aspirin, whatever I can get my hands on. I've got some retinol eye cream uh, to sleep with. Then I have a bit of a spare bag for all of the random hair essentials, hair ties, bobby pins, um, there's some nail clippers in here, uh, all of that good miscellaneous stuff. Then I usually only travel with one or two accessories, necklaces, this type of thing. So I keep it, keep it pretty minimal. And that is about it for the rest of my toiletries. 
And that concludes my ultimate one month carry-on packing guide. I hope you found some of this information helpful. If so, don't forget to subscribe. There are nearly 70% of you who are watching my videos who are not subscribed yet. So if you can tap that button, it definitely means a lot to me. And if you wanna comment anything that surprised you in this video, I would love to hear from you. And on that same note, if you want to hear more travel related tips, tricks, hacks, recommendations, and destinations, you can sign up for my newsletter at LexiLimitless.com slash newsletter, and I will also send you a free preview of three chapters from my upcoming book. So thanks for watching, and until next time, keep pushing your limits.